Today's game is brought to us by Dynamic Designs. You might remember them as they translated one of the game, one of the first games we featured on Now in English. And so it's really cool to see them back at it again. Alright, hello and welcome to Princess Minerva. This is an RPG translated to English. Uh, I mean, yeah, they were a dime a dozen for the Super Nintendo, but in this day and age, we're classic sprite-based RPGs. Heck, this is probably even an action RPG. Are nowhere near a dime a dozen. Well, nowadays, when people make action RPGs, it's all kind of 3D based. Which, well, it's kind of okay. Actually, there was a recent remake of uh, Secret of Mana recently, and people were complaining that, well, so that game was originally a 2D Super Nintendo based game, and it was uh, ported to 3D. And so, uh, <laughs> and thus on a whim, Princess Minerva launched her big scheme. <laughs> but anyway, they updated the game from the 2D thing to 3D, and frankly, it, because there's the thing about 3D is there's a lot of directions to have to deal with, technically in 2D. Well, that wasn't entirely unexpected, but entirely welcome. Man, they really don't just... Music just sounds different than it used to in the 90s, and especially video game music. I don't know, there's just some some element of catchiness that the old stuff had. And it loops. My arch nemesis. Anyway, like I was saying, they upgraded from 2D to 3D, and 2D, I mean, yeah, there's technically infinite directions, but typically you just do up, down, left, right. In 3D, I mean, there's no real focus on up, down, left, right. And it just turned into a complete mess. Well, I'll start a new game and get into things. Oh. Indulge the staff of Dynamic Designs. Well, you guys translated this, so sure, I'll listen to whatever you guys have to say. Uh, Bo Bankson, or Postband77. Hey, thanks. Oh, no. Oh, this is one of these messages. Hey, yeah, by the way, all you distributors in the future looking for games to put onto a cart and sell, hey, don't do that. Technically, that's illegal. And legally, that's illegal. Of course, if anybody's gonna stop you, it sure as heck isn't gonna be the patching people, but they can at least make you feel guilty about it. Hey, yeah, somebody stole your money. Well, that's an, that's very charged language. Technically, they sold you an illegal product, but I mean, if you still got your cartridge, technically they didn't steal your money, they just committed a crime, and it gets a little complicated. This is why only lawyers study law. The rest of us just pulled it out of our ass. Demand your money back. Oh, jeez. Jeez. Oh, 
You know, one thing that's a little bit underappreciated with these menus is that it flows through the text really nice and snappy. And again, this is one of those areas where having a 60 frames per second video, not to toot my own horn, really just kind of sells the effect because you can see that smooth scrolling. I don't know, I feel like that's just this underappreciated art, just like entering your name in name entry high score screens. It's like how smooth can the text look as it scrolls across. Hey wait, we got about six bodyguards. We got about six of these people. I'm noticing a pattern. I kind of wonder why they didn't actually localize this game, because it sounds like the music is amazing. The graphics are pretty sweet. I guess they were just kind of intent on thinking that, uh, I don't know, I guess maybe Americans just, just wanted to like kill each other. And so that's why they wanted Dragon Ball Z. They didn't want any of this cute girl stuff nonsense. How wrong they were. If only they could see things now. Hey, wait a minute. Izumir is the chick with the ponytail going to the other direction, the exact same sprite as the original chick, but just flipped. I mean, some of these people, they, their eyes all look the same, so they're not exactly palette, but so like, they kind of look like palette swaps of each other, but that's just because their eyes are the same, and that's kind of like the focal point here, I guess both in video games and in anime. But what's kind of strange is one of them is actually a palette swap, but the rest of them are actually kind of different. Well, I mean, as different as... You can make six different girls wearing essentially two different outfits look. <laughs> Busting far more than her chops. <laughs> if I was gonna give somebody a death threat, yeah, maybe I should give something as disguised as that. Oh geez, so if you did not actually watch the intro screen, you would be completely lost at this point. Well, actually not, because it is probably described on the back of the box, but still, that's kind of strange. Usually the intros are somewhat tangential to what actually happens, not necessarily the intro. Oh, once a bounty hunter, she upgraded to Merciless Killer. <laughs> what the heck? <laughs> this is quite the upgrade. <laughs> oh, man. And especially one of those things that it's a little bit subtle, but it's easy to miss, but it's really cool. The film grain that you see is like it fades the images in and out. Because again, they didn't have Photoshop back then. It would have been hard to do. They have to program everything into assembly. Uh, hey, whoa. Did she just pop into scene? But anyway, like that's the kind of stuff that like you can really only do if you really love the game and you're willing to go the extra mile. And I will say it looks absolutely amazing. <laughs> like, like her, she was a bounty hunter by trade, but unlike her, she did not turn into a ruthless killer. For some reason. I don't know, maybe it was just human nature. So, so, some fencing skills as she twirls a staff. Well, now I'm beginning to understand why this game was maybe not necessarily localized. A side profession adept with a whip. You guys keep trying to sneak things past me, but too perceptive. Oh, jeez. <laughs> so, so that was the one chick telling the other chick, which is kind of hilarious if you think about it, because like there was kind of some embellishment, kind of some playing them up. So, uh, why, if you're a bad guy, why would you be so interested in like playing them up? And a suspected sadist. Oh, this game gets better, even.
<laughs> Br Br brilliant deduction. <sighs> oh, oh my god. This is the part where you start wondering, is there any gameplay to this game? Just kidding. I love the cutscenes in RPGs. You know, I kind of wish there was an RPG that was entirely cutscenes. Of course, there is such a thing. It's called anime. Oh my god. Are they on... They, those eyes are very... Attentive, shall we say. Okay, she looks normal. <laughs> she also looks normal. But what's strange is there is the two of them who look like, I don't know, crack addicts. And so it's like, why? I'm beginning to think this was a deliberate design choice. You know, I bet you didn't know there were so many ways of drawing anime eyes, but there are. Look at her. Of all the people, she'd be the most like a crack addict, but no, her eyes are just kind of regular. Oh, well, actually, her eyes look more normal now that I look at them. Maybe it's just the one girl who looks crazy. <laughs> they all just beat each other up. <laughs> it's it's one of those elite fighting forces. <laughs> oh, she's in the water, isn't she? <laughs> Why is this so funny? I don't know. Did she just stab the water? She's like weighing it up in her mind. She's like, well, it would pay me more. This is an unmitigated disaster. <laughs> you mean before or after everybody started beating themselves up? Well, technically they did, but... No way to uh, speed this up, though. Zermatt Val d'Isère, Deer Valley. One of these sounds a little bit different than the other ones. <laughs> They've been assigned to attack the cities in the countries where I assigned them. Well, that's standard operating procedure. Auto-scrollers of RPGs. Auto-scrolling text. You know, I really don't know why this can't have been done in a text box. I mean, I guess it's a little bit epic, but 
We are like, what, two minutes into this thing? And I'm already a little bit tired of it. Who does this crazy woman think she is anyway? I thought she was the great general Dynastar. Uh, considering that I only have about 30 minutes to devote to this game before I get bored, probably not. Something about this really screams fantasy star to me for some reason. <laughs> well, you gotta set that up somehow. <laughs> well, people always complain in RPGs, hey, why does they why do they always start with nothing? And uh, well. Oh, they were all there. Doing that weird RPG thing where everybody stacks on one person. This is almost as bad as Civ 4. All we have is one big question on our minds. Is this turn-based or action-based? At least there is a depth to their... Well, at least there is a ceiling to their incompetence. Uh, they still all have their armor, so they at least are not naked. Okay, time for the most important check. Who has heal spells? Uh, Blue does, because she's amazing. You would expect that. Uh, this chick is like a complete mage. I like her. And this chick is a mini mage. And she's also a mage. So in the first three... Well, I guess we make up for it by Tyrola being completely badass. Why am I so concerned about uh, who's in what uh, formation? Well... Something I read very quickly in the description, you actually get to allocate your characters into three different teams and send them off and do stuff. So that's something to keep track of. Well, uh, at least you can save right away, which to somebody as paranoid as I am, complete boon. Oh, so you, uh, run into people to talk to them. How very enlightened. That's a big lot of cash for you jerks. <laughs> oh man, burn. That's, that's great. 
what it lacks in uh, RPG fundamentals, it probably makes up for in charm. Just like Earthbound, now that I think about it. So, uh, just in case, just so you don't have to count for when you inevitably buy the mall knives. Uh, there are nine of them, by the way. Oh, I see. I was thinking of buying the most legit one, a bronze sword, but her being the most legit one, she already thought about that. And uh, continuing Japan's rich tradition of Christianity, uh, churches are prominently featured in this RPG. I am being entirely facetious. Oh, hey. So you can save via spell or via church. So one thing that's always bothered me about RPG item shops is they don't always explain what it is the items do. I mean, potion, that's pretty clear. It's a genre tradition by now. But a blanket? What does a blanket do? Is that like a tangent Final Fantasy? Is this like a, a decoy item? Is this going to be some sort of essential quest item? All I know is I fear the unknown, so I will not touch it at all. find that cheat, please let me know. <laughs> I like how she remarks that the reward is a lot less than the ransom, as if subtly hinting that maybe we should have just kidnapped the commanders ourselves. Speaking of things that are off about this scene, you notice how on the piano how there's the one note that's slightly discolored? I'm calling it. There's a quest where you have to touch that piano key. Oh, strange. So if you press start, the game does absolutely nothing. Because what does a pause function even matter in an RPG? And now for the moment of truth, turn-based or real-time. That's right, Castle. Knife him. Knife him good. Which one is Castle? Let's all group up on her, then. Castle gives him a good knife -in. Oh, thank god, it's one of those RPGs that remembers where your characters attack. I attack, she takes 10, I defend, and she takes 7. Uh, that is technically a benefit, but still. Also, Monster Chicks, and did you get a load of her backside? I am beginning to completely understand why this game was not brought to the West. So one bit of RPG strategy that I've come up with over the years. So let's review our three people who participated in that battle. We have Castle, we have Olin, and we have Twa. Now, Castle is a straight up fighter. She doesn't even know what spells are. Don't even mention them around her. You'll just make her confused. Olin, she can scrap a bit. She can cast spells. She's one of your all-rounder types. Twa is basically useless in a fight. I don't even know why I bothered buying her a knife. 
So the trick is, we need to heal somebody because Twa is at 13 HP. She could be legitimately, she, there's a legitimate chance she will be killed in the next battle. So who are we going to use to heal? Are we going to use Olin or are we going to use Twa? If you say castle, you're an idiot. Now the trick is, Twa in battle, she needs her MP to actually cast spells if we want her to be useful. But Olin, Olin can scrap with that knife we bought her. So if you use Olin's spells rather than Dua's spells, you save a valuable resource. That's smart. And you thought RPGs had no strategy. There is a slight amount of strategy. Oh, okay. So in the last battle, we had three of them, now we have three others. So, uh, good luck. Now you have to memorize all of the characters and everything that they do. It is kind of a nice change, though. It adds some, like, diversity, some kind of freshness to the battle. How about Minerva? Yeah, how about her? Plus the battles are pretty quick and they're snappy, so I like it. Whoa, whoa, what is this sorcery? Map is not a skill. Map is not some weird skill that you learn at level five for no apparent reason. Map is not some sort of included extra that comes with the game and serves as a de facto form of copyright protection. No, map is an option in the menu and it's actually incredibly useful. Like, looking at this map, this map is three times more useful than most maps for RPGs you're gonna find on game packs. I mean, nothing's labeled, but hey, that's okay. I wouldn't appreciate what the labels mean at all. <laughs> wow, she just did 27 damage. All the rest of these fools can barely scrape by with 10 damage. So I'm gonna call it right here right now. She's the character you're supposed to rely on in the beginning, but who will ultimately betray you or just some other way become unusable. Wow. And uh, something else about this game that reminds me of Fantasy Star is the frequency of enemy encounters. Good gosh. We are just coming up with encounters left and right. Ooh, now we get another exciting discovery. Does sleep uh, affect outside of battle too? A la Pokemon. Moment of truth. Okay, good. Looks like uh, it does not affect me. Oh, so it looks like they level up based on what you use them with. So uh, maybe I should have the spell one use more spell. Oh, who are these people? I am so glad everybody's a portrait and differently colored hair, because otherwise there is no way I can tell them apart. So on screen it shows like three of them going into the beds, but keep in mind we have like nine chicks with us right now, so uh, where do they all sleep? My personal guess is two of them share a bed and one of them sleeps on the floor. And each team, they have to play rock, paper, scissors to determine who has to sleep on the floor. Hey, you never know. I mean, <laughs> all these translators. I don't know if they added it in or if it was already in the game, but it's pretty funny. Well, you never know. Maybe there will be a town built to the east. No, no one has ever entered the forest of no entry, though. So this is all speculation. <laughs> oh, these games.
<laughs> oh, this game. The jabs keep coming and coming. Hmm. Little appreciated feature. We left from the west gate of the town and we ended out on the west gate of the outside. Let's see if the opposite holds true. Hey, hey! That's how you can tell this is a quality RPG because they thought of little details like that. <laughs> Isn't it treacherous for you girls to travel alone? There are like nine of us. <laughs> so you know up to this point I've been doing the typical RPG thing I've been talking to every single villager but I just I just want to review the map for just a quick hot second one two three four five and then two grain silos there are five towns in this starting area and in fact there's probably going to be even more as we go to even more areas and it's just that is overwhelming that is crazy now a lot of people think it's a little crazy to just go into a go into a town and just talk to everybody and it's like i don't know for me that's standard operating procedure but to to go through this and just <laughs> like five towns it's like i lost interest by like the third town Oh, now we get to find out what, how to revive dead party members. Okay, I'm beginning to think this is one of those Final Fantasy encounters where if you walk just the wrong direction, then everything gets a whole lot more difficult. And, uh, yeah, I mean, previously the enemies, we could handle them with just the regular auto attacks. But uh, this is a little bit more difficult. Hey, please don't put to sleep my mage damage dealer. Oh, now we get an even... Okay, never mind. So apparently statuses do get cleared over time. Which is nice. Because uh, they sure seem to be giving us a lot of these statuses. Well, let's say, good thing I saved in the last town. But at this point, there's no real point in running. Might as well go for broke. And, uh, now we're broke. They stole our money! Oh, wow. So now we get to find out what happens if they're defeated, and we have to pay for it. Great. And she's still poisoned, even though she's dead. How, how kind of the enemies. Giving us that great two-for-one deal. Two hundred fifty to revive them. I have a quicker method of reviving them. Yeah, you can't really skip the uh, weird uh, who made the screens, but you can skip the introductory cutscene, which is great. Okay, well, I've learned a lot. Apparently, we are in a little bit too far, a little bit in over our head. I guess we got to grind on the lower level enemies first. There's only one of them. This is gonna be easy. Okay, go. Okay, good. <laughs> oh, good. I, I did not entirely believe what I was saying there for a second there. I thought it was actually pretty deep. But yeah, wow. 250 to revive one of your characters and you only get like 10 per battle? Those are some pretty harsh economics. It is a little bit annoying how when you're going to heal somebody, uh, it, like, it selects them on the battle menu, but it doesn't let you see on, like, the HP menu who you're actually healing. Back to my uh, master strategy of attack, attack, defend. You know, I thought Twa had offensive skills, but I guess I was wrong. So I don't know if I mentioned this, but basically every other town prior to this point, it was blocked off by a 
police warning. They were like, hey, this guy's been kidnapped. We can't let bad guys get weapons. Yeah, they were ordered not to sell them, just like what he explained. Great. So I want to amend my earlier statement where I told you to heal with Olin. Because it turns out Olin has offensive spells, and offensive spells are really good against the tough enemies. So okay, Tua, only good for healing, so fine. Use Tua to heal for everything. Well, how's that for a feeling of progress? I just attack them like normal and I do enough damage to one-shot them. So, yeah, it's always nice in an RPG to be reminded of how far you've gone. Oh, so we made it to the cave. Now, granted, we made it through the cave without any enemy encounters, which is really just the random number generator goddess just smiling on us. But, uh... Well, we can't go in. So, uh, I thought that was the next place to go. And they're like, nope, don't go to the cave. It's dangerous. And so, okay. Well, that's great. Don't go to the cave. Should have told me that at the beginning of the desert part, so that I wouldn't have had to, like, die and grind and whatever. Well, at least it's a good source of XP. And gold, too. So long as your characters don't die, which is incredibly expensive. You thought Dragon Quest was expensive. Well, Dragon Quest, you only had, like, three people tops. I guess Dragon Quest 2. So you really only had, like, three people tops. And it's like, healing too? It's like, okay, you can do that. But in this game, you've got nine characters that's potential for nine, like, I don't know, six, five people to be killed. That'll bankrupt you faster than you can say... Well, I don't know, monsters beat you and stole your gold. Alright, so I've decided to finally take a look at these stats and really start to understand them. And so it looks like there are various classes a character can be, but it's not like most RPGs where the character is exclusively that class. It looks like you've got all these classes and then they level... like, each of them gain experience and then finally they level up. And then the, the class ratio, I think that's determined by like who the character is. But uh, they all seem to have their own sort of different ratios. Also, interestingly enough, Elf is a class. I mean, I think that's how it was in the original Dungeons & Dragons, but still, that, that seems a little bit silly that Elf is a class. Okay, well, finally we've made it back to the starting town. We fought through hordes of enemies, leveled up to a point where the beginning enemies are now trivial. Well, at least for one party. And so we finally made it back to the one town where you can actually buy equipment. Now, I say for one party, because what team goes out against the enemies is random. But I think the way it works is that, like, the team in front more often fights... And so that means your team one gets pretty beefed up because they grind and grind and grind. But then your other teams are less fortunate. And in fact, that third team, yeah, I mean, I'm glad the one chick can use magic because otherwise there's no way you can handle this. Oh yeah, pro tip for uh, handling hard enemies. Magic, use magic, magic all the time. This is Dungeons and Dragons level magic where the magic is incredibly powerful, but like you can't use it a ton. So you can't like, really rely on it, but basically what you do is you use magic a few times to kill strong enemies, go back to the inn and heal, and you keep doing that. And that is the most efficient way to grind in this game. Well, this is kind of ridiculous. So apparently you can play dress up, where uh, you can actually select which armor they use, and then their sprites look different. Well, at least for that brief second. So that's kind of interesting. Look at the small little twa. <laughs> she looks so happy to be getting armor. 
Uh, I'm glad she's happy about it, though, because she really does need it. Well, with that, we have finally entered the Forest of No Return, which, thanks to Blue, I now know is the proper place for us to go if we want to continue our adventure. Well, let's see if we can ever return. Ah, uh, crap. Looks like you can't easily leave. Oh, okay. Looks like leaving's the easy part, making it to the end is the hard part, which is totally fine with me, because when those enemies start beating you down, I'm gonna leave. I wanna get out of here. Oh, you can probably only warp out here at this yellow colored one. Well, at least it's easy to tell which place I started at. Well, into the forest I go. Yeah, and you thought going through the forest would be as easy as remembering which tile to go on to next. As it turns out, it is not quite so easy. And I guess that means we gotta go back to the townspeople and see what they have to say. But dang. So basically, the punchline is, when you go on any of the stone slabs, then you get transported out. Which is good for me not dying the enemy standpoint, but it is terrible for a making it to the end of the game standpoint. <laughs> yeah, maybe you guys should try protecting them yourselves. Jeez. If there's one good thing, there's one really good thing about this game, it's Minerva's Wit. A lot of RPGs, they can play it a little bit straight, and like you play Dragon Quest, and I mean, the grinding is great, but the actual story is a little, how shall we say, bare bones. But at least with this game, you, you walk into a new town, at the very least you have Minerva's witty comebacks to look forward to. Now, usually you would have the new armors and weapons afforded to you to look forward to, but alas, that is not the case with this game. Back to the grind. Alright, well, it's gotten to that. I've been playing this game for like two hours, and I started using fast forward towards the end. I'm a little worn out. I could probably still play it, but I mean, there's a lot going for it. There's a lot going on in it. So let's get to that moment when we look at game facts and see what's up next princess minerva let's see fact dun, dun, dun. oh okay so what's really weird is he says go out of town and grind until you have a hundred thousand or one thousand gold of money which is weird because you can just talk to the guard and get a thousand gold instantly Anyway, in fact, he even mentions this. It's like, talk to the soldier and you get a thousand gold. It's like, wh why'd you even bother grinding for it in the first place? Because you told him, because like, you grind for the armor and then you buy the armor? It's like, wh what? This doesn't make any sense. Anyway, train it until your, all your characters reach level 10. This may take a while, actually. And then, let's see. Go to a cave to the northwest of the town. Okay, fair enough. Boss battle. This is your first boss battle. And you know what? I really don't want to fight a boss battle. 185 HP? That's a lot of HP. I don't think I have enough spells to beat him in one hit. Oh my god. Well, how long is this game? Oh, oh jeez. Oh, whoa. Chapter 2. Oh my gosh. This is that a maze? The, the maze looks even more intimidating than some of like the dungeon crawling games I've played. Each of Odyssey is actually fairly tame, but some of them have pretty intense dungeons. And even though they auto map them for you, it's like when you have an entire screen full of map, like it's just absurd. Especially even this, it's like even this is like it, it's probably not that much stuff, but just you get a face full of map and it's just I don't think I can handle that. And uh, keep going. Oh, chapter three. More and more and more and more and more and more. Chapter four. Man, chapter three was pretty short. Not even any 
crazy mazes. Oh my god, chapter five. Chapter five, we weren't even one fifth of the game one fifth of the way through the game. Oh my gosh, how much money about there's one chapter for each of the big bad people? Oh the ending after the battle, watch the ending. Oh my god, the long ending. Well, the beginning was pretty long. I can only imagine the ending is gonna be just as long. That's crazy. That's crazy. I don't want to play through this game. It's probably going to be like, I don't know, 20 hours, but still. That's that's a lot longer than a quick look. I already put in two, two hours. That's that's more than I put into Lando Hikari. Actually, it's probably about the same. Honestly, I got to say, it's it's actually a really good game. Like a lot of these games so far, they've been... They've been a little okay. They've been a little rough. No, this game this game seems awesome. And it seems like a game that like it wasn't uh, localized probably for some obvious reasons, but like in our new modern enlightened day and age, those reasons probably aren't going to bother you. So, well, feel free to play the game then. And thanks to Work Designs, we have it translated into English. Well, thanks to Working Designs, it's now in English. And on that note, this cat's got a scat. All right, hello and welcome back to Princess Minerva. I know after the last video, it made it seem like I really didn't want to play this game anymore, because it seemed like there was a whole lot of hassles more on the go. Well, as it turns out, doing all of those things as described in the guide was surprisingly easy. And yes, there was this haphazard map given to you in that guide, but as it turns out, the game itself gives you a map of the Lost Forest. And that just, this game, it just makes it so easy to enjoy the game. I really like it. This game, it's nice and easy. It's like Dragon Warrior, if it was also pretty easy too. So uh, things have changed and yet they've stayed the same. Uh, pretty much the only change is now I've overleveled my characters to such an extent that Twa, you might remember her as the semi-useless healer, uh, well now she can do about one-third the damage of my other two members. Uh, this middle party is particularly annoying because they are not so great at melee damage, but melee damage is the is the thing that like is the is the cheapest to do, you know? You don't have to uh, worry about oh, okay. Icarus ring, oh wow. Oh, oh, I have two of them already. Uh, let's see. So, uh, I also noticed, um, something interesting. So let's take a look at, uh, Minerva. Yeah, so there's MP, there's TP, and there's SP. And so, previously I thought there was only MP, but no, turns out there are three resources you can use, and, well, the different characters level up differently, and the different classes they level up into have different amounts of SP, TP, and whatever. This is my physical party. I just spam a- oh, right, right. I found out an immensely useful tool, so I don't know if you've been waiting this long to play the game. Uh, you're going to thank me, because I'm going to show you the way. All right, so I just did three attacks. Now, you look at these symbols. These symbols look very scary. This one is all three people gang up on one person, which sounds like it's useful, but I don't think it's actually useful at all because you almost always do more damage with your skills. This one is escape. Somehow I knew that just by looking at it. But the weird circle one is repeat your action. And so pretty much you just go ahead and repeat your action, which is great because it takes like five seconds to scroll through that um, menu every time. And if they don't kill him, it's like, geez, that sucks. And you can see uh, my characters are getting one. Count it one experience point per battle. So, yeah, that's one of those grind heavy games. That being said, if you put the game on fast forward, ooh, okay, this party. There's only two of them, so what could go wrong? Oh, crap, that's right, the mage chick, she learned a new spell. It's like an ice spell or something. And it really hurts them. And besides, she's like a bajillion. Never mind, fire's the way to go for those guys. But she she learns like a she has like a bajillion magic points to just waste, so I, I feel no I feel nothing about wasting all that MP every time. Uh, the weird things that look like buttons are actually chests. I would not have expected that, but uh, that's how it is. And uh, yeah, you might not think using Twa to attack is worth it, but as it turns out, 
It kind of is, and again, she takes about the same amount of damage anyway, so why not? This is one of those times when fast forward is immensely useful because, well, as you can see, not a lot happens, and my strategy is already set in stone. So anyway, uh, well, the plot-wise, anyway, well, again, uh, there were those evil people who messed with our heroes. It's been a long time since I saw that <laughs> cinematic, so don't hold it against me if I can't remember what it said. But uh, anyway, there were these guys we had to beat up, and... Well, you, you know how RPGs are. It's like, okay, we, we did the one task they told us to, and then we did the next task we told us to, and then we did the third... Oh, God. That's right. Remember that super secret cave that I discovered? Well, as it turns out, you had to do something there. There was a puzzle there, and I, like... Let's say 80% figured out myself, 20% figured out using the guide, and, like... It, it was simpler than I thought, but it was more complicated than I thought. It was... Ooh, actually a level. It's, it's been a long time since I last saw that. Oh, two of them. She learned warp. Great. This game actually is getting more and more convenient. I don't know, it's, it's just a weird game. Like, it's strangely friendly once you actually start playing it. And like, yeah, okay, I approach the game in the dumbest way possible. I like, accidentally walk to like the hard area. But if you don't do that, then it's actually not bad. So, anyway. Uh, again, we are climbing this tower to get to the bad guy. So, I mean, if, if you just keep watching, you're just going to be seeing a, uh, quite frankly, a lot of this. Although, check out how much SP they have. 60 points of SP. It takes, like, I don't know, 8 for, for the most expensive skill. That is a lot of SP. Anyway, I'll uh, join you back at the top of the tower when uh, interesting stuff is happening again. So I just wanted to uh, cut back in to show off these alligator chicks. I don't know. It, it's a new enemy. Well, I guess it's all new enemies to you guys. Also, this is what it feels like to play the game on fast forward. It's surprisingly palatable, although I do only recommend a 2x fast forward. Because any more is just a little absurd. But it, it feels like this game really needs a 2 times fast forward because so much of this game is a little bit slow. And, and if you recall, like... Back when we went through the uh, menus, it seemed like uh, even going through the menus was like a little bit slowed down. So you really need the 2x, especially for things like that. Also, just in case you were concerned, yes, I did grab this blue thing in the middle. It was a... An elixir. I don't know what elixirs do, but I... Hope it was worth the 10 minute detour. Well, I wonder what could be behind these doors. Your mouth would keep running on autopilot. Uh, somehow I can relate. Oh, choose your fighters. I heard about this. So when you fight a boss, then you can choose who gets to fight. Um, let's just be boring and choose my main three. Now you're gonna see how a boss fight works. Pretty much it's the same as a regular fight, but you don't hold back at all on your arts and techniques and whatever. Like, for example, let's see, this bolt sword. Usually I'd be a little put off. I mean, it uses six skill points, but spare no expense. In blaze sword, eight skill points. That seems like a lot, but no expense. Also blaze sword, because consistency is key. Uh, it looks like we're only doing about 30 damage to the boss, but don't be disheartened. That's about all you ever seem to do on bosses, anyway. <laughs> now we get the unfortunate qu Now we have to answer the unfortunate question of 
Who gets to be the healer? Uh, Minerva has the most heal points. Also, um, Minerva learned heal. So now that's actually an option for her to heal us stuff. And just for comparison's sake, let's see what a bronze sword will do. Again, no boss in this game is hard if you can uh, grind up enough. Oh, this is her special power. Skill change. It does weird stuff. So as you can see, uh, yeah, you do marginally less damage if you don't use your skills. So, let's try magic. Maybe magic will work. Oh, I should not have used magic to attack. That's a good point. I need magic to heal. But I've got more than enough potions, because again, well, I won't spoil part of the surprise, because literally every character in the town tells you this. But you can heal, or okay, you can damage the zombie dragons by using healing items on them, including but not limited to potions. Also, you can use the healer trick to heal them, so finally, she becomes the most deadly combat unit you own. And, well, you just keep at it with the blaze swords, and you'll defeat the boss sooner or later. Heck yes. I also hear that once you save it a chapter, you can't go back to the previous one, but... Again, as part of my extensive survey of chapter one, I did visit every single shop and talk to every single person. Probably not actually, but pretty much basically. Well, I hope uh, this feels familiar because this feels exactly like how chapter one started. Although hopefully this time they'll sell us weapons and goods this time. Oh, by the way, uh, we got 20,000 gold, totally not because we held that uh, Captain Ransom or anything. Well, alas, the story of Princess Minerva and her friends continues, but our look at it is coming to a close. Honestly, Princess Minerva was a really good game. It's kind of like Dragon Warrior, except if you kind of amplified the rewards of grinding and de-emphasized the difficulty. Because again, I thought for a second, like, having nine characters would be, like, a ridiculous amount of grinding, and it just tripled the grinding. However, if you can play the game at double speed, and you account for the fact that, like, you, you do gain experience at a pretty good rate. I mean, so long as you're in, area, in an area where, like, you aren't, like, completely overpowering the enemies and only getting, like, one experience apiece, you are actually earning experience at a pretty decent click. And so, well, I mean, hey... Yeah, that's that I mean I'd rather level up nine people at once because I mean hey it's it's exciting to level up a an RPG character and the other thing too is you don't necessarily know what class they're gonna level up and you don't know when they're gonna learn a new badass spell the answer is usually not but sometimes yes like like Tua 
That silly, uh, healer chick. She learned a spell, actually. Uh, how do we, how do we show this off? Check that out. Bolt Goddess. It attacks all enemies with a bolt weapon. I mean, again, her, uh, magic points is a little bit too precious to be using for attacks, but still, hey, anything can happen. Your healer can learn an attack. This is a crazy game. I don't know what's coming up. I kind of wish I did, but, well... Unfortunately, you gotta draw the line somewhere. You can't just keep playing a game for infinity. You can't just keep playing a game until it's finished. That's that's nonsense. Well, that's that's how normal people do it, but that's not the Ashkabat Cat way. So, until next time, this cat's got a scat.